guys, it's Francis with Find Your Crazy, and we're back with another Tip Tuesday. It's our favorite time of the week when we get to share with you our tips and tricks and hacks for raising a big family in a really small space as we travel the United States in our RV. And today, I'm gonna tackle the number one most frustrating part of living in an RV for me, which is keeping up with laundry with this many people. Our rig is older, and so it did not come with a washing machine and dryer, nor did it come with hookups for them. And so we have been kind of struggling over the past year and a half with keeping up with laundry on a budget. Because you see, we would normally just go to the local laundry mats or we would use the campground laundry. And that was working okay because we got it all done at one time, which was Jay's favorite part of doing laundry in a laundry mat. But the least favorite part is the amount of money that we were spending. It costs our family more than a hundred dollars every month just to stay on top of our clothes. That's not even counting our towels and dish towels and comforters and sheets and pillowcases and all the other things that go into laundry with a big family. And so we were looking for a way to save money, but also to make it more accessible because not every campground we went to had a laundromat and also we didn't always have time to spend an entire day stuck in a laundromat when we wanted to be out hiking and having fun and so i have been researching for probably a year um, how we can get laundry done and there are so many different types of ways and uh, strategies to do that but we had not found anything that really worked for us but we were in maine and a friend of ours in the campground was selling her giantix portable laundry and I wanted it so bad. It's a washer that is an all-in-one and so I had been researching and knew that was a great um, one for our family but also a great deal. So I bought it and I bought it from her used which is a great tip because if you are looking for something that you want to try in your rig or your sticks and bricks in your life, try to look on Facebook Marketplace, look at garage sales or look and listen to friends who are selling it online because you can get a great deal and try it out and make sure it's going to work for your family. So I did that and for the past several months we've been using this little portable washer and it's been a game changer. So today we're going to go into the bathroom. I'm going to show you a little bit more about this portable washing machine and you're going to see if maybe this is the trick for you if you don't have laundry in your RV. Okay, so oh the joys of trying to film in an RV bathroom. <laughs> it's too small to kind of show you exactly how all this fits. So we are going to start here showing you a little bit about the Giantix and then we'll go through a wash cycle so you can see from start to finish how we hook it up, how we put the clothes in, how it washes, and then the finishing of the of the spin cycle. And so I wanted to share with you again that this is Giantix. We will be putting in the link in the description box so that you can follow that and go to Amazon for the full description description, how big it is, uh, the footprint that it's going to take up in your RV or your house, and also any other um, questions that you might have about the specifics of this model. And so this is an eight pound capacity, which just means for us, it fits about a week's worth of clothes for each child. Depends on the season. So if it's more sweatshirts and jeans, certainly it's not going to do go as far. But in the summer, we can get an entire week's worth of clothes, including underwear, socks, um, pajamas, and play clothes all in one load. I think that's amazing. Now for the adults, it's usually about two loads, just depending on what we have and what season it is. So this little guy does have a lot more punch than it would seem. It also is an all-in-one washer. So it does not dry, but it is an all-in-one washer. What that means is several online you'll find have a wash cycle but then you have to change the clothes over, even change hoses out to get them to spin out all of the water. This does all of the cycles for you at one time, meaning you will put your clothes in, you can close this, start it, and walk away. It's going to wash, it's going to rinse, and it's going to spin them so dry you will not believe it. So this guy is really a wonderful little guy to add to your collection of laundry tricks, tips, and hacks. It's been a game changer for us. And so we normally have the kids um, sort their laundry on their day. We've talked a little bit about that on our chore charts and our meal planning that each kid has a day that they do things. So they sort their laundry, they bring it in here, they help us put it in, the detergent in, and then we push 
start. We go do our homeschooling and within 40 minutes, the entire cycle is done to the minute. And so you can really get a couple of loads done or for us, we just do one load a day, one child and one person a day. And then we're able to get back out and do all the fun things that we want to do. So now I'm going to begin to move this back to its normal spot so that you can see kind of exactly how much space it takes up because it does take up a very large footprint. That is something to think about. You really need to know where you're going to put this guy. Also, how convenient it is. We could put it in our shower like a lot of people do, but that's a big pain because we use our shower every single day for all of us. And so you need to be able to find a place before you buy it of where it's going to be. And that was one of our big holdoffs is where were we going to put it and were we willing to give up that amount of space. So we're going to put it back in the space and then I'm going to walk you through how we set this up and start a load. Okay, so we here is where the washer actually fits in our bathroom. You can see it does take up a pretty good footprint because RV bathrooms are really small um, and everything takes up a lot of space. But for us, it was worth it. So you do really need to look at your space, figure out where you're going to put it because not only do you need to know uh, where it's going to fit, but how and what you need to do to prep for that. So it does need to be near water, obviously. So you're going to need that in your kitchen or in your bathroom. But if those two places do not have the right storage for you and it's cumbersome and in your way it does come with a cart the people that we bought it from had it in their toy hauler and they were able to move it into different spaces in and out of their bathroom so if you don't have space for it to stay our stays here all the time we use it every single day so for us we kept it here but if you can't do that know that you can move it easily on this cart anywhere within your rig or your apartment or home and that is a really great thing that that you can know about that. They, so for us, what we needed to do was have it near water um, because ours was gonna stay stationary. So when we first got it, this comes with three hoses, well, two hoses and then the power cord. So there is a water hose, there is a drain hose, and then you have your power cord. That's it. It's really, really simple to set up. But you gotta make sure that you have the right hookup. For us, we had a screen that was over our faucet. And so we had to take that off and and then the washer comes with an adapter for your sink. So all we simply had to do was take off the screen that was here originally, and then we were able to screw in this adapter. And for us, we just leave it here because we use our washer every day. You certainly could take the adapter on and off, but as you can see, the water runs just fine without um, even um, taking it off. So for us, it was much more convenient to leave it on every single day. But that does come with the Giantix as well. So know that you don't need to purchase just that, but you will probably need to use that. At least we did for our RV sinks. Then you're just going to take this um, little edge right here and you are going to uh, thread it on to your sink. Now I'm going to tell you, it went on really easy this time. That never ever happens. I don't even know how it happened. It takes a little bit of jostling for me. I will not lie. And you just have to be patient with it. Not every time do I get the threading right. Not every time. I have no idea why it worked this time. That's a blessing. But normally I kind of have to fight with it. So just be patient. No, you're not alone. There's not a fault or in your system. Um, it just means that sometimes it takes a while to get this threading right. So we thread it in right there. You can see I always check it before I start to make sure water's not spewing out. That does happen if your threading is not correct. Water will start to spew out from the connection and then you need to stop and then you need to re-thread it and try again. And so I turn my water on. As you see, it's ready to go um, until I, you know, get started. The second thing that we want to tell you about, and I'm going to unhook this for a second <laughs> and let the water go out. Um, one thing I wanted to show you was this zip tie. Okay, so the biggest problem we have had with this system is the drainage because the water comes out pretty quick and there's a lot of volume of water in here that you wouldn't imagine. It's a lot more than you think it is. It's a small washer, but there's a lot of different cycles coming through there. And this water comes out really fast, especially between the rinse cycle and the spin cycle. It is pretty fast and furious. So what we were finding is, and this is a real deal that you really have to be careful of. Normally, this thing is loose. It will, and so I tried just sticking it down in my sink 
it doesn't work. You've got to have some kind of fastener that will keep it from flopping around all over your bathroom. Ask us how we know. <laughs> Twice, we've had water go everywhere. If you, you can't sit and babysit it, but I'm telling you, it, when we walked away, inevitably we have had twice that this has flooded. Uh, we were able to quickly get it taken care of, but you don't want that. Water and RV is not your friend. And so we decided what we would do was zip tie this to the water hose. So when I thread this through here, as you can see, it stays stationary. So I just make sure that it's far enough into the sink it is zip tied together so the most that it can do is just kind of flop around i make sure that it's about right it's facing down into the sink and it never moves since we have done this we have had zero problems at all but i highly encourage you to stand with your washing machine the first two to three times you do it and make sure that your connections are right make sure that you have your hoses like you need them to be because when it doesn't work it's a giant mess and that can be really really bad for your rv for your flooring and all of that we have had some catastrophes the next thing i want to give you a tip on is make sure that you have full hookup connections we've tried this without sewer hookups and it's kind of crazy. I mean, unless you're willing to stand out and you're willing to watch, um, really know what your tanks are doing, but not only that, we have a portable waste tank. Make sure that you put it in there and you're watching it. You have to be really careful because this thing does go through a lot of gray water and um, we've had some problems with that, some big problems with that. So that is my biggest warning to you is dealing with the water situation, making sure the water goes down into the sink, but number two, making sure that water has somewhere to go and so I suggest you have full hookups this may not be the choice for you if you um, do a lot of boondocking if you are mainly in partial hookups with no sewer this may not be the best choice for you we choose to uh, we have full hookups and we do what laundry every day when we're not um, full hooked up we make sure that we do it just once at one day we're at hookups and I just go through the laundry or we go visit the laundry mat All right, so we're all hooked up and we're ready for our first load of laundry. So this works like most laundry mat ones where you put the detergent in first, then you load your clothes in, and then you start the cycle. Um, I would say for me what I have found as a tip is instead of carrying around my big giant um, detergent, um, I leave that in the car, in the back of the car, and I just went to the Dollar Tree, bought a small um, detergent, uh, I think this is, I don't know, Tide or Gain or whatever, and a small one if it's easily in my cupboard, but it also has this really small cap and you only need between one and two tablespoons of detergent. Do not load this guy up because you can tell it's going to overflow <laughs> with suds. You only need a very, very small, and I use also the HE that is low sud. So whatever kind of detergent you want, please just like make that very minimum and try a couple of loads, but start low because you don't want to suds over. That hasn't happened to us. Um, the poor, uh, previous owners told us that, but make sure that you um, calibrate your detergent, whatever kind you use, to less and start there and then you can work your way up to what you think is appropriate and keeps your clothes as clean as possible. So we just pour a little bit of detergent in here. I only do this about halfway full and I put that in. Normally the kids help me with this because they enjoy uh, doing their laundry and that's part of theirs. And then we just start loading the clothes in. It's pretty simple. Um, you're going to see, I'm going to let you watch this because I'm going to let you see these are Joseph's and you're going to see about how many clothes are going in here. All right. So we're already up to several pairs of shorts and laundry and all kinds of things that so we're still going. Swimsuits. Okay, lots of socks going in there. So you can see I'm already still going. Now, the other thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to uh, shove. Okay, so um, you can kind of press down lightly, but do not 
shove these down to keep going in. Don't do that because uh, two things. Number one, they're not going to get clean. <laughs> they're just not going to get clean. This is a very small little basket. They're not going to get clean. There's not as much room to agitate in this as you would a nice big washing machine and dryer. So just know, don't shove down in here. But number two, um, your stuff's going to get really, really wrinkled because there's nowhere for it to go and it just compacts in the rinse, um, the spin cycle and you get stuff that like is really, really wrinkled and it won't come out. So just kind of, you know, push down lightly. I like to make sure that there's room. The water's going to come out right here. Make sure that there's a good space for that. Don't fill it so high that when this water comes out, it begins to overflow. Okay. You want the water in not coming out. So now we've got the clothes in. You saw how much that was a full week's worth of clothes. That's every bit of clothes Joseph had for the week. Underwear, socks, uh, uh, pajamas, everything, swimsuit, all of that. So now we're ready to go. The only other thing we have left to do is we need to make sure it's near an outlet so that we can hook it up. Um, the water is on. One thing to know is that this does not have different cycles for your hot warm and cold. All right. The only thing that you can do is work that out with your um, water source. Okay. So for us, we have a, a, a portable, well, I guess a water heater <laughs> or a heater for our water. I don't know what you call it, but anyway, it is um, constantly, we can set the degrees on here and it's a, it never ends. It's like a, a what is it? Tankless. Anyway, what is it called? Tankless hot water. Yeah, tankless hot, that's Jay. Tankless hot water here. So um, we just put the, I know what the degrees are for each one. I put in the degrees, but, and then I just turn on the hot. That's how ours works. Um, but if you want cold, you need to probably turn this off and turn your cold on or work that out with your hot water heater. However you calibrate your hot, warm, and cold, because that is the water that's going to come in here. You don't set it on these. Then all you do is you turn the power on. You're going to see that it gives you four different options. There's a soak option, a wash option a rinse and a spin. You can move this through the different processes to choose whatever you want. So you can just choose to soak them. You can choose to just wash. You can choose to just rinse if something's really gross and dirty or you can choose something to spin. And so what I do is I only do um, wash rinse and spin. I don't ever soak. I haven't used that yet, so I don't know about the soak cycle. But I do the all three in one, but I have just used the rinse cycle before and I have just used the spin cycle. It also gives you a low, medium, and high load. So if you want um, just a few things, a medium load or a high load. Most of the time I have a high load, but I have absolutely used the others um, for just spot cleaning and things like that. So make sure that my load is right, my process is right, and then all I have left to do is push start. The good news is I can show you what this looks like. You cannot open it in the spin cycle, but you can open it in the wash cycle and you can see that the water is coming out. It is going right into the, the um, basket in here, so we're good to go. So all I have to do is walk away. In 40 minutes, it's going to beep and it's going to let me know it's done. Alright, so it just beeped and that means it's done. 40 minutes is all this took. 
super quick. And now I'm going to show you a little bit about how these guys come out. And so they are super dry. I wish you could kind of feel it, but you can you can see that they are super dry. We are so impressed uh, with how well this spins and how much liquid it gets out. It doesn't take me long to dry them at all. And so what I do normally is I just put all these in a basket and then next week we're going to show you how we dry them. So I'm going to quickly take all these out and then I'm going to show you how to disassemble this and our tip on how to do that. Okay, so this has three water cycles, and each cycle goes through about eight gallons of water on the high um, mode here. And so if you're washing a large load and you're putting it on high for all three cycles, the wash, the rinse, and the spin, you're going to go through about 24 gallons of water on high. You obviously can calibrate that for medium and low depending on um, your wash cycle choice. But realize, I'm going to say be really, really, really mindful of your water, gray water um, <laughs> system because we have had some major issues with trying to figure that out. So I suggest it, number one, seamlessly on high, um, full hookups, but after that, just be really mindful um, and really watch it for the first several cycles to make sure that you don't have some kind of explosion or overflow or what gray water issue under your rig or um, outside in your portable waste tank. So we're going to disassemble this and then we're going to go outside and dry it and we're going to do that next week. First and foremost, ask me how I know, again, is make sure your water is turned off. If you don't, water is going to go everywhere. There's still going to be a little bit of water because there's water in this tube that you're going to have to get out, but turn it off before you disassemble. When I get busy and distracted, I have multiple times left this on and gotten sprayed with water. So make sure you turn it off and then you are going to unhook this. Minimal water comes out. What I do is I just take both of these hoses, make sure there's not any just sitting right in the top of it, and then I put each of them inside and I close this down for two reasons I do this. We tried multiple ways to get the water from these hoses out and it never worked. Inevitably, there was always water dripping on the floor and sitting there. That's not good <laughs> for any flooring, but especially RV flooring. Number two, you want to let this air out. You don't want mold and mildew to start growing in this basket. And so if you just kind of let it stay open and you don't close it down, you leave this a little bit open, you leave your hoses in here, they're gonna drain into the basket. All the water is gonna be kept there. You're also gonna be able to aerate in here and then you're good to go until your next cycle. We just keep ours just like this because I do not want any water um, dripping out so I always keep the hoses in here because I never was successful in trying to get all the water out you just unhook it from the outlet and I certainly don't put that in the basket and we just push it back in here and then we are ready to go so I hope this has been helpful to you we looked a long time and tried to figure out exactly what we needed for our washing cycle um, inside the rig I will tell you it has saved us so much money now we spend almost zero dollars every month the only thing that we do at the laundromat or the camp laundry are our um, comforters and sometimes our towels that is it. Sheets go in here, pillowcases go in here. We do everything that we can in here. And then next week I'm going to show you how we deal with our drying situation, which is also saving us a ton of time and a ton of money. So I hope this has been helpful. And if you have any RV or home tricks about your laundry systems, how you do it, how you get your kids involved, and what tips, tricks, and hacks you could share with me, I would love to hear it because I'm always learning and I want to hear from you. So drop those in the comments. And until next week, I'll see you have fun with your crazy family. Bye guys.